Hi, everyone, and welcome to the presentation of Asabloy's Q1 report in 2024. My name is Björn Tebell. I'm heading Investor Relations, and joining me here in the studio are Asabloy CEO Nico Delvaux and our CFO Erik Pider. Good morning. Good morning. We will start this conference as usual with a presentation of the report before we open up for your questions, and then we will round up in about one hour's time. So with that little introduction, I'd like to hand over to you, Nico. Thank you, Bjorn, and also good morning uh, from my side. Q1 result, I would say very similar to our Q3 and Q4 results of uh, last year, with uh, a tough comparison compared to the same quarter uh, a year ago, with uh, continued uh, challenging market uh, conditions on the residential side, and definitely also with three fewer working days in, in March. We posted a negative organic growth of uh, 2% for the quarter. But then also this quarter, good to see that that uh, uh, lower, in this uh, case, negative organic growth is overcompensated by very strong growth through acquisitions, 11% uh, in the quarter. Neutral uh, currency effect, so a top-line growth of uh, 9%. And I would say a very good operational um, execution because uh, despite uh, an, an important uh, volume uh, drop, we have uh, uh, posted 15.4% um, uh, uh, EBIT uh, for the uh, quarter. That is including HHI and all uh, related uh, costs, a 16.3% uh, EBITDA and a record uh, EBIT uh, margin for a Q1 in absolute uh, value. Thanks to good price realization, lower direct material cost, and then also good short and and long-term uh, cost actions giving us a, a good volume leverage on that uh, negative organic uh, growth. Also seasonally strong cash uh, with uh, a very good cash conversion of 67%, uh, so around double of what uh, we normally expect for uh, a Q1. And then we continue our uh, acquisition uh, pace with three acquisitions signed in the quarter. If you look at the numbers, a sales of 35 billion sec, 9% up, like I mentioned, 2% negative organic uh, growth, 11% uh, positive net acquired uh, growth. An EBITDA margin of 16.3% uh, uh, and an EBIT margin of 15.4%. Uh, EBIT at 5.4 billion sec, 5% up. If you look a little bit at, uh, at the world map, unfortunately we see a lot of negative uh, uh, numbers when it comes uh, to uh, organic uh, growth for the reasons I, I mentioned uh, earlier. And perhaps rather than commenting uh, uh, continent by continent, I can repeat what I said in, in, in previous uh, uh, quarters. We continue to see a weak uh, residential uh, market as well for new build as for R&R. Uh, that is true in North America, that's true, true in Europe, through in uh, Oceania, our main uh, markets. Uh, perhaps we, we see a little bit uh, faster recovery on, on the new build and on, on the R&R side, and where geographically definitely uh, North America to st uh, stays uh, ahead in, in the curve. We still expect um, the resilient market in, in the U.S. to turn first. We see uh, uh, more challenging continued uh, um, residential market conditions uh, in, in Europe, definitely for the the coming uh, quarters. On the other side, we see still very good momentum on the non-residential uh, side, perhaps not as hot anymore as 18 months ago, but still very good uh, market conditions, uh, again, as well in, in North America, in Europe, as in um, Oceania, where our spec business is uh, still up uh, mid-single uh, um, digit. If we then uh, go a bit to the different uh, market uh, uh, highlights and, and project wins, also this uh, quarter, several big, bigger uh, project wins. Loading dock solutions uh, delivered to three large uh, distribution and logistic facilities in the U.S. and in Europe. A milestone when it comes to our Yale doorman, uh, with one million Yale doorman sold in the Nordic countries since the launch back in 2011. And then a very nice win of a large U.S. public university, one of the big, biggest uh, universities in in the U.S. selecting our electronic access control uh, package for their professors and their uh, students. Uh, different uh, new product launches uh, in the quarter. Yale Durus, a smart lock uh, 
that you can fit on, on whatever uh, uh, door, uh, adapting to the different door styles launched here in, in Sweden. Twin X, a keying system for high security environment in uh, Australia. And then HID's identification system with facial recognition integrated with uh, self-check in kiosks for using airports, hospitals, hotels also integrated in the gate uh, solution, speed gate solution from uh, entrance uh, systems. Then also this quarter, good to see that uh, our innovation efforts are uh, uh, recognized uh, in the market. We won the design awards for our expression speed uh, gate series and for our Yale Smart Video, doorbell, smart outdoor and indoor um, camera solutions. And then at uh, IC West, uh, the biggest security uh, exhibition in, in the world, we also uh, won two uh, important uh, awards. Um, Control ID won the ID face, uh, uh, with their ID face uh, product won the biometrics uh, category. And then Centrios, um, our access solution for small and medium uh, enterprises, won the best access control uh, so software uh, awards. So very proud about uh, those two uh, awards as well. Unfortunately, 13 is for us an unlucky number. We had uh, 12 consecutive quarters with positive organic growth. Now the 13th is negative organic growth. But then, like I mentioned, good to see that it's overcompensated with very strong growth uh, through acquisitions. A good uh, continued uh, operating margin execution, 16.5% EBITDA margin uh, run rate and 15.6% EBIT margin um, run rate on a 12-month moving trend. Operating profit uh, strong, a record operating profit for a Q1. Uh, and then on the acquisition side, we continue to be very active. We had three acquisitions signed in the quarter. They represent together an annualized sales of two billion. Sec, the highlight in the quarter, definitely integrated warehouse solutions, a U.S. manufacturer of loading dock uh, equipment, really complementing our product uh, offering and also bringing us uh, uh, several new strong uh, brands uh, into the North America uh, market, uh, helping us further uh, strengthen our position uh, for uh, loading docks and loading dock uh, solutions. They had a sales of 1.9 billion sec last year. If we then uh, zoom in a little bit into the different uh, divisions, starting with EMEA, an organic sales uh, decline of uh, 3%, where, like I mentioned earlier, we continue to see challenging uh, residential market conditions that has uh, uh, def uh, mainly a, a negative effect on our Nordics uh, sales and our UK uh, sales, because we continue to see strong growth in Middle East, India, and Africa. We saw stable sales in South Europe, but then sales decline in the other uh, regions. Despite... Uh, uh, a more important negative uh, volume growth, I would say strong uh, operating margin of 13.7% uh, with a limited operating dilution of only 50 uh, base points. Very good actions done in EMEA on, on the cost uh, side as well, short as long term uh, cost uh, actions, price versus uh, raw material kicking uh, in, helped by FX and M&A, both uh, 20 base points uh, accretive. America's Organic sales decline of uh, 1% with uh, a stable uh, commercial North America sales, a slightly negative uh, uh, sales in, in Latin America. Significant sales decline on, on the organic side of U.S. residential, but this, that is uh, a very small part of uh, what, what has uh, remained on the residential side in, in the Americas. More important to look at HHI, where HHI had uh, sales down mid-single digit, what I think is a good result taking uh, into account uh, residential market conditions in, in North America. A good operating margin of 18.1% now, including HHI and all related uh, uh, costs. Where also on the HHI side, we, we see a continuous um, EBIT margin improvement as well as compared to um, last year, as well as compared to um, Q4, which um, I think is... Uh, is, is very good if we take into account the fact that Q1 is always seasonally, top-line-wise, a weaker um, quarter. Dilutive FX, 20 base points, and okay, you see the dilution of M&A, which is mainly uh, HHI-related. Uh, um, opening solutions, uh, Asia-Pacific, 
an organic sales decline of 3% where we had good sales growth in Southeast Asia, but sales decline in the other um, um, regions. Again, same story linked to uh, the residential market uh, uh, conditions. And of course, like you know, what I mentioned earlier, for all divisions also the fact of the three working days less in, in March. Very good operating margin uh, improvement, 5.1%. Uh, very strong operating leverage, 40 base points uh, accretive. Hard by FX, 60 base points due to the weaker Vietnamese uh, currency. And then a dilution of M&A of 50 base points that's linked to the investment of the first smart residential factory in Vietnam to Fortune brand linked to the HHI acquisition. If we then go to the global uh, divisions, starting with global technologies, an organic sales decline of uh, 9%, uh, where in um, HID we had strong sales growth for citizen ID and identity and access solutions, but then uh, sales decline uh, in the others and a significant sales decline in PECs. You will uh, uh, remember that we have there a very tough uh, comparison with the same quarter last year where uh, we built up uh, 18 months, uh, two years ago, a big backlog because we had uh, challenges with... Uh, semiconductor shortages. We then finally uh, able to invoice that backlog uh, uh, last year um, and, and therefore the, the difficult comparison Q1, which will uh, continue to be a, a tough comparison also uh, now in uh, Q2, by uh, the way. Um, affecting, uh, you know, top line in a negative way, affecting also uh, bottom line because PAX is a very profitable uh, business area in, in HID. Strong sales growth in global solutions for the different uh, uh, verticals we uh, focus on. And an operating margin of 15.4%, uh, what um, I believe is a good uh, result if we take uh, the negative mix uh, into account, the PEX uh, story uh, I explained, and, and a strong sales growth in Citizen ID where we uh, make uh, lower uh, margins. An operating dilution of 110 base points, 10 base points dilution from FX, and 20 base points dilution from M&A. And then last but not least, entrance systems, a flat organic sales uh, development, where we see very strong sales growth in perimeter security. Perimeter security is traditionally the, the, uh, the first one in uh, the cycle, and we see perimeter se security really coming uh, back now. Strong sales or continued strong sales growth in, in pedestrian, and then a sales decline uh, in, in industrial, which is perhaps later in the cycle, and, and res residential where uh, we um, also uh, are convinced uh, that uh, uh, residential has bottomed out and we should start to see a gradual Im Im improvement from, from here onwards. Good uh, uh, growth in, in service, so a positive mix, service versus uh, equipment, leading also to a very good operating margin, again, I would say, of 17%, uh, with very strong operating leverage, 70 base points, held by currency, 20 base points, and then, Dilution from um, M&A, 10 base, base points that's mainly linked to the IWS acquisition I mentioned uh, earlier and related integration uh, cost to that uh, acquisition. And with that, I give the word to Eric for some more details on the financial numbers. Thank you, Nico, and also a very good morning from my side. The sales, as, as we mentioned before, was in total up with 9%. Um, if you look on the acquired growth, the 11% that's predominantly related to HHI as well as the new acquisition that Nico talked about, the IWS. You see very little impact on, of the currencies. Um, operating income was at a record high level for a Q1. It was up with 5%. Um, EBIT margin for being a Q1 uh, and also including HHI ended at 15.4, which is considered, I think, to be strong in, in a Q1. The, the operating income was up with, as I said, with 5%. You see the income before tax has a minus in front of it. That's minus 5%. That's related to the higher interest rates cost that we have. If you look in the quarter, it was slightly above 800 million sec compared to around 340 a year ago. If you look for the full year, we expect the interest rate cost to be roughly around 3.5 billion sec, providing, of course, what that sort of that the current that the interest rates remain on this level this of course also has an impact on the eps which was down with six percent 
Operating cash flow is in value is down with roughly 1 billion sec, but we compare to an exceptionally strong Q1 of, of last year. If you look from a historical perspective, as Nico mentioned before, it is very strong. I have a cash conversion rate of 67%, uh, which is also a strong number. Finally, on this slide, not surprising, our return on capital employed goes down with 2.8 points and that 14.6, which is, of course, related to the acquisition of HHI. If we dissect a bit and look on the bridge, uh, the minus 2, there we have a positive 2% of price, which means that we have a negative 4% in volume. The flow-through is still at uh, 23%, where we can sort of see a strong operational execution where we have a good price versus cost when it comes to the direct material. We have done a lot of MFP. The total impact of MFP in Q1 on the positive saving side is $210 million. And then also we have uh, impact from the short-term cost measures that we implemented last year that we can also see in, in Q1. If you look on the currencies, as I mentioned on the top line before, it's negative. It's positive on the bottom line. That's due to positive transaction effects on different currencies. And finally, you see on the um, M&A a negative dilution, which predominantly come from HHI as well as the divestments of MTEC and uh, SmartRes. If we then take down to the cost, if we then go even further and look on the cost breakdown, uh, direct material is uh, positive of 2.6 points. Out of that, roughly 110 base points comes from the mix where we have a, a stronger um, Americas and we have a weaker um, APAC. But then also we have a mix within divisions, like, for instance, if you look into um, entrance systems where they had a stronger service versus equipment. Both conversion cost as well as SGNA um, are negative. They are impacted by, let's say, the, the lower sales as well as the higher uh, wage cost. We have been able to offset that partially with the MFP and the short-term cost savings, but it's still a negative, as well as it's still negative for the quarter, as well as we have continued our investments in R&D. Uh, operating cash flow, um, as mentioned before, um, a little bit more than 3 billion sec for, for the quarter. Um, we see that it's seasonally strong with the exception of the even stronger that, that we have a year ago. We, of course, see here that we have the impact of increased net uh, working capital predominantly with the inventory as well as we're impacted by the higher interest rate in, interest cost that we have had in the quarter. Cash conversion as I mentioned before is at 67 percent and if you look on a 12 month rolling we are uh, at 125 percent. The uh, gearing uh, net debt to EBITDA went up from 2.3 end of last year to 2.4 in this quarter the debt as such went up with 3.4 billion sec. That's out of that roughly 3 billion is related to um, currencies. But then also in the quarter, we have also been active on the acquisition uh, side with IWS and the other two that you saw before, which meant that our debt went up then, as I mentioned before, with 3.4. Still, I think that we have a very strong balance sheet and can continue our acquisition strategy also going forward. Last slide for me, the earnings per share, I mentioned it before, it's down with 6% uh, versus the same period last year. The main impact on this is coming from the higher um, interest cost. And with that, I hand back to Nico for some concluding remarks. Thank you, Eric. So um, if we summarize, I would say strong execution in a challenging uh, market. Again, uh, a difficult uh, comparison with a strong uh, quarter last year, um, a challenging residential market, and then three working days less in March gave us a negative organic sales of uh, 2%, but then overcompensated with uh, uh, growth requisitions of net um, 11%. Very good uh, execution with a record high underlying Q1 margin and a, and a record high um, EBIT in absolute uh, uh, value. It's clear that we continue uh, to operate in an uncertain economic uh, 
climate, and I can only say the same thing as I said in previous uh, quarters. We will continue to take advantage of those uh, opportunities we see in the market. There is still regions where uh, we see very good uh, momentum. Uh, there is segments uh, where we see uh, opportunities to uh, further significantly uh, grow. And on the other side, then, there is uh, uh, markets and, and, and segments uh, that are more uh, challenging. And there we will, through our uh, agile and decentralized organization, make sure that we adapt uh, cost to the new uh, uh, reality, realize efficiency, and protect bottom line and, and cash flow. <laughs> And then Bjorn has asked me to remind you that we have our capital markets days on 14th and 15th of May, on the 14th of May in a hotel in Prague, and on the 15th of May in our factory in uh, Vishnov. And it's not too late to register. You can uh, still uh, re register if you are uh, interested uh, to join. As you can see, last register, registration date sorry, is uh, the end of this uh, month. And with that, I give the word back to Bjorn. Thank you, Nico. Thanks for that reminder as well. Um, it's time to open up for questions now. Um, there are not as many people in the queue as we usually have, but could I please ask you to restri restrict yourself to one question and a follow-up? Once we have been through everyone, you can obviously register yourself again to, to ask a question, and uh, you get that opportunity. So with that operated, it means that we are ready to kick off the Q&A session. Can you please go ahead and organize that? Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone telephone. You will hear a tone to confirm that you have entered the queue. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star then two. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Anyone who has a question may press star and one at this time. First question from Vivek Mida, CT. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, everyone, and good morning. Um, can I please ask um, on the U.S. residential uh, business? So we've seen HHI sales down mid-single digit in Q1 versus down 1% in Q4. Um, and you also commented that you're more positive on new build than R&R. So how do you think about the trajectory of the improvements in HHI? Is it still reasonable to think you can go back to growth at, by the end of this year? Um, and also on HHI, you commented that there's been an improvement in the margin. Um, I didn't catch um, if you commented what that margin was. So could you um, give us more color on that, please? Thank you. Yeah, so I, I think it's perhaps two separate questions. One is more on the on, on the residential market um, um, in general. Like uh, I mentioned earlier, if if you look at the residential market geographically, we still are convinced that uh, the U.S. market is further down in the cycle. Um, so uh, U.S. residential market is or has bottomed out, and and we should start to see gradual um, improvement going forward. Everything depends, of course, on, on the interest uh, rates, and, and news on the interest rates uh, changes every every day. I think the news we had over the last couple of, of weeks, of course, is not uh, good news. Uh, that will definitely not accelerate uh, uh, the recovery. But still, we are uh, uh, confident, and like I mentioned, we see um, definitely on the new build housing starts uh, positive uh, numbers. We see that also if we talk to our OEM window hardware uh, uh, OEM window uh, yeah, uh, producers, uh, for instance. I was with several of them uh, last week in, in the U.S. They are positive on the on the new build uh, side. R&R takes a little bit uh, uh, longer because people have to move houses uh, to uh, to see the big R&R coming uh, back because you do R&R when you want to sell your house or when you, want, when you move into a new house. That's when you do the big uh, R&R. But I would say... Uh, even with uh, a negative uh, uh, top-line evolution for HHI, we continue to see quarter after quarter um, EBIT uh, uh, improvement, and that irrespective of the seasonality, because HHI is seasonal in the sense that Q3 is the highest uh, uh, quarter top-line-wise, uh, Q4 it goes down, and then Q1 is the lowest uh, uh, quarter. So this this. Q1, which is seasonal, will be the lowest. We were still able to improve our 
uh, EBIT margin compared to uh, Q4 uh, last year, and we were able to improve our EBIT margin significantly compared to the same quarter uh, a year ago. We are confident that we will be able, like I mentioned also earlier, to continue to do that also in the, in the coming quarters, I would say irrespective of where, uh, where the top line uh, uh, goes, because we, we see uh, more and more synergies uh, uh, kicking in, and we see also good results of some of the actions that it, HHI did even before we uh, acquired them mid uh, last uh, year. So we are confident on, on the further uh, margin improvement for HHI. Thank you very much. The next question from Gael Debray, Deutsche Bank. Please go ahead. Well, thanks very much. Good morning, everybody. Um, can I ask firstly on global technologies? Um, I think the, the negative impact of the tougher comps and, and reduction of the backlog versus last year was probably uh, uh, around 5%. So why are GT revenues down so much, you know, 9% in total? Do, do you see that as a, a temporary setback, maybe due to timing effect this year? Or is uh, specifically the physical access control business uh, perhaps seeing uh, uh, so some greater competitive pressures now? That, that's question number one. And then maybe the, the second one, uh, quick one, uh, would be around the cash flows. Um, I appreciate the commentary on the, the, the usual uh, uh, seasonality, uh, but the $2 billion uh, negative swing in working capital still looks pretty high to me, given the drop in volumes. Uh, so so any, any com comment on this, please? Thanks very much. Perhaps I'll take the first question and then Eric can uh, comment on the, on the second one. Um, on Global Tech, there is just one extra, uh, you could say, extraordinary item in Q1, and that's the one item that I mentioned also in general, is the fact that we had three working days less uh, in March, which obviously also uh, affected our uh, uh, Global Tech uh, results. But then apart from that, I would say that it's yeah, mainly... Uh, our PAX uh, result and the comparison with uh, last year that uh, makes uh, the, the up the, the yeah, more important uh, negative organic growth in, in the quarter. Traditionally, PAX has been a business that grows somewhere mid-single uh, digit uh, in, in normalized uh, market conditions. We are still confident that that is the case uh, for, Mac, for PAX. I would say we will find out in the second half of the year because Q2 will still be... Uh, an unusual quarter because also last year, um, Q2, we were uh, eating up in an important way uh, that uh, PAC's uh, backlog. I think it was around 250 million sacks, something around that uh, number uh, last uh, year that obviously we will not get uh, this year. And as we have much uh, shorter delivery uh, times uh, today than, than um, a year ago, of course, also the order pattern uh, of our uh, partners in the market has become uh, Shorter. So, yes, Q2 will still be um, challenging, but then as of the second half of the year, we should see a, a more normal pattern again for global tech and, and, and PACs in particular. If you then take the cash flow, again, also remember that we get uh, currency effects in this, which is, I mean, I talked about the currency effect that we had on the, on the debt. Of course, we also get that into our networking capital. So I would say the main reason for the working capital, and there it's actually the inventory, is related to currencies. Okay, thanks very much. Thanks. The next question from Daniela Costa, Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good morning. Um, so a uh, question in, in terms of April, sometimes you comment on the beginning of the quarter on the call, so I was wondering if you could, if you could comment now, and then more sort of towards the, the, the rest of the year. Can you give us a little bit of color around how pricing is evolving and raw material mix so, so that we think about the margin bridge? Thank you. Yeah, so uh, it's a bit difficult to comment on, on, on April with the three working days less in in March, but if you correct for working days Q1 and you correct for working days uh, uh, April, because in April we have two working days uh, more. By the way, we, in June we will have uh, again the, the, or we have three working days more in April and we have two working days less in, in, in June, so you will have a little bit of a similar 
phenomenon now in, in Q2. But if you compare, compare for, uh, of if you correct for working day, sorry, uh, then, uh, and, and then compare with uh, same period last year, we've, we have seen a better April than uh, uh, Q, uh, Q1. And in that sense, I think you should also look at March and April together to get a, a, a good view where, uh, where we are uh, going. And going forward, of course, our comparison will become yeah, easier. Last year, Q1, we had, I think, an organic growth of 8%. Q2 last year, the organic growth was only uh, 3%, yeah, on, on a high level, but uh, percent-wise, an, an easier uh, comparison. When you look at uh, price versus uh, material, as, as uh, Eric mentioned, we had uh, 150 base points net accretion price versus material cost in, in Q1. We have continued to increase uh, prices in, in, in several uh, markets and in several uh, segments. The only place where it, you know, it's, it's today difficult to further increase prices is everything that is steel related. There we are happy that we can keep uh, the existing uh, price level. So that's, that's true for uh, garage doors, for uh, fencing business and, and specialty uh, doors. So um, we still should see a good uh, accretion from price versus cost in, in Q2 at the lower level than, than Q1 at the lower level than uh, second half uh, last year, but still uh, a good accretion. And then toward, uh, towards the second half of this year, we should then see that become more uh, neutral. Of course, under the uh, conditions that material indexes stay where they are and that the pricing hygiene in the market uh, stays as it is uh, today. Very clear. Thank you. Operating. The next question is from Alexander Virgo, Bank of America. Please go ahead. Yeah, well, thanks very much. Good morning, everybody. I uh, appreciate you taking the question. I wondered if you could just dig a little bit deeper into some of the trends in, in Europe. Uh, I, I guess the, the April comment has been incredibly helpful. I'm just wondering how you've seen things sort of move through uh, the month um, and thinking particularly uh, with respect to, uh, uh, I guess, renovation and the mix effect that you have. That would be my first question. Uh, and then the second question would be, um, just picking up on the pricing comment there, I think pricing was probably a lot stronger than I'd expected it to be in the quarter. Um, so I'm just wondering um, if you can give us a sense, uh, even if not the numbers, uh, about where we should be reflecting that in the divisions themselves. Thank you. It was a little bit uh, difficult to understand because the line was not so clear, but I believe your first question was on uh, if you could comment on the market conditions in uh, EMEA. Um, so, like I said, we still see uh, good momentum on the non-residential uh, side, uh, commercial and institutional, where we still see uh, our uh, spec business uh, up uh, mid-single uh, di uh, digit, which is, I could say, the only leading internal indicator uh, uh, we see. That is around 55% uh, of our uh, business in, in EMEA. 45% is residential, and it's clear that residential remains uh, very um, challenging. Uh, I would not say that it's getting worse, but it's definitely not getting better uh, neither. Uh, it's on a, on a flat, uh, low level, and um, uh, conditions are, you could say, the worst in, in North Europe and in uh, the UK, where in the UK for several quarters now we have seen a, yeah, a depressed residential market. Same is true in, in, in the Nordics, where... Perhaps Sweden is a little bit earlier in the cycle than, than Finland, um, where uh, we have, uh, have seen also yeah, a more important decline in, in Finland than in, in Sweden, which are the two more in, uh, important markets for us in, in North uh, Europe. And then, you know, situation also on the residential side is not good in the rest of, of Europe, but definitely better than, uh, than North Europe and, and uh, uh, the UK. Um, I think the second question was uh, around uh, pricing. Um, like I mentioned uh, earlier, we have continued to increase prices in December, January. We have also continued to incre increase prices now uh, in, in March, April, and, and, and we will do so also in, in May in different markets, in different um, uh, categories. So we uh, expect also a, a good solid uh, 
uh, effect from price for the full year um, uh, this year. If you look traditionally, prior to COVID uh, times, you would have a price effect of perhaps 1%, around 1% on a, on a year base, yearly base. As we have higher inflation now after COVID-19 uh, uh, times and even in a normalized uh, market, we still see higher labor uh, increases, we see higher energy costs, we see higher general inflation and material prices, even if they have stabilized, they have stabilized on a, on a higher uh, level. We need a higher price component to, to compensate for that inflation. And I think, like I mentioned at earlier calls, I would dis be disappointed if we would not have at least a, a 2% uh, price component uh, for the full year this year. Great. Thanks very much, Nika. Next question from uh, Johan Söberg, Kepler. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning. Uh, uh, a question maybe to Eric here. I would like to ask you about uh, the entrance systems, also the margins here, looking at the 80 bits improvement year over year. I would like to sort of break down how much of that is raw material cost related and how much is sort of the, the service business growing and the impact from that. And uh, I'm just going into sort of your projectory when it comes to margins for entrance systems uh, throughout 2024, also given your forecast. Thank you. I, I can, I can, uh, you can start. <laughs> I can answer. I think we are obviously very pleased uh, with uh, the 70% uh, EBIT margin for entrance systems. Like we have said always, we, we aim uh, to bring at entrance systems within the 16 to 17% bandwidth. We have as a target uh, north of 16%. Uh, uh, um, we said a couple of times to, to be above 17 or 17, all stars have to be um, aligned. We still believe, uh, you know, Somewhere slightly north of 16% is a more realistic number long term for uh, entrance systems. But I think it's a combination of a lot of uh, uh, good uh, work that has been done, um, very good price uh, realization in general in the four uh, segments, and obviously helped uh, by uh, uh, material because they have a big exposure to steel, and steel definitely went down compared to the uh, peak of uh, 18 months, 24 months uh, Ago. But I think they have also done a very good job in uh, operational uh, uh, efficiency in their different uh, factories in their uh, uh, supply chain. I think they have also done a very good job in new product development, bringing uh, new products to the market that we can sell at a better price and that we build at a lower uh, uh, cost. So I think it's a, it's a combination of, of, of different things linked indeed also to the positive mix in the fact that we grow faster in service than, than equipment, which in the mix and gives us a, a positive uh, effect on, on, on the margin. So I would say a combination of a lot of good uh, things and, and very happy with um, the execution of entry systems over the recent years. Uh, perfect. But then also just going, uh, going um, into the next uh, three quarters this year, how, how do you see the, the margin progressing here? Typically, Q1 and Q2 tends to be lower margin quarters, and then it picks up in the Q3 and Q4. Should we expect that also this year? We will see going, going forward because obviously a lot of things uh, uh, depends also on the mix. First of all, mix service versus equipment. I would love to have a negative mix because that would mean that our equipment business is going to grow much, uh, much faster. But obviously we also have uh, uh, an important mix effect among the different segments. We know that perimeter security as by far the, the best uh, margins in, 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 in entrance systems. So it will depend also how we see the relative growth of the different uh, uh, segments. And, we will, and it will also depend on um, maturity in, in, in the market, how, uh, you know, how we will be able to keep prices further, increase, increase prices, what will happen to material indexes and, uh, and so on. What, what we have said at earlier occasions, we, we believe the north of 16% habit for entrance systems is... Uh, an ambition and, and, and reachable uh, target, and that's what we internally uh, uh, work with. Perfect. Thank you very much. But also there, you want just to add, I mean, you know that, I mean, this is exceptionally strong for entrance being a Q1. So don't sort of expect, let's say, that you would have the normal season effect within entrance system because this is very strong. Yeah, I understand. So, so, so the more steel, the better margins right now. Or the more, more the more service we can do is also pretty good. 
And thank you very much. Next question from Gustav Schwerin, Handelsbanken. Please go ahead. Yes, morning. Thank you. Um, on uh, HHI and the topic of uh, residential maybe bottoming out in the U.S., um, when you look at the volume development quarter over quarter, would you say the drop is lower than the normal season, or um, is there any improvement yet to be seen? Uh, and then related to that, can you comment on the level of price increases uh, for, for Q1 and HHI versus the um, group average of uh, 2%? Thank you. Like, like we said, the organic growth has been minus 5%. Uh, uh, the, the organic uh, um, decline has, a bit, has been a little bit higher than in, in Q4. Uh, if you compare Q4 with <laughs> Q4 the year uh, uh, before, so you could say that, that it's slightly worse than, uh, uh, than, uh, than, than Q4. But again, uh, we have the more important uh, uh, change is the the seasonal uh, change where, again, Q3 is the highest, then Q4 starts to go down, and Q1 is uh, uh, the lowest. We will see now how uh, top line evolves in the coming uh, quarters. When it comes to pricing, uh, we, we don't want to comment uh, specifically on, on HHI. Uh, let, let's say that yeah, pricing has been similar to uh, uh, what we mentioned on, on, on group level. All right, perfect. Thank you. I understand that there's one person left in the queue, so if there are any more questions, uh, then you can press star one, I think, and, and uh, we will probably be able to go to you. Please continue, operator. The next question from Leeds Maidi. Jeffries, please go ahead. Good morning, gentlemen. Um, two quick questions. Number one is, um, and Nico, on your outlook on non res construction in the U.S., we have another print from the ABR this morning. Just perhaps if you could kindly comment on what has been your specs business in the U.S. has done. I think you commented on Europe earlier this, on this call. Um, you know, what, how's the specs business done in the U.S.? Uh, secondly, how do you explain the discrepancy between ABI and your specs? I think we've had ABI beans weak for such a long period of time that if it's indeed it's been a, uh, it's a leading indicator for your business, then you would have already seen it in your numbers by now. Perhaps, you know, commentary here, and how do you see the outlook? Um, so, like I mentioned, in general, our spec business has been up uh, mid-single digit, again, against a difficult comparison a year ago. Uh, spec business was slightly better even in the Americas than uh, in uh, uh, EMEA. So we continue to see good uh, momentum, and we see that good momentum over the different uh, verticals, uh, K-12, universities, uh, healthcare, um, uh, you name it. Obviously, offices it should not be a surprise that offices is a little bit more challenging, but that's a smaller uh, vertical uh, uh, for us. So, yes, we see a, a discrepancy, perhaps even a big discrepancy, between our spec business and I would say also our results, our sales results, and what um, ABI uh, tells us. Now, if you look a little bit deeper in ABI, you, in ABI, you will see also that the ABI index is better for the institutional part than from the pure commercial uh, part. And obviously, we are more exposed to institutional than pure um, uh, commercial. So that might be part of the um, explanation. The other part of the explanation is obviously that there is a very big, long pipeline of construction work that is uh, uh, being, being executed uh, now. And yeah, clearly that, that backlog of construction work uh, becomes, becomes smaller as uh, ABI indexes uh, remain on the, on, on the lower uh, level. But so far, we, we don't see that slowdown in our commercial um, um, business or non-residential business. Um, we had a, a flat, slightly positive uh, development in, 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 in Q1, despite uh, all the um, uh, reasons I, uh, I gave earlier in, 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 in the call. And we are still positive on, on the commercial side in, in North America. So I guess my honest answer is that it is difficult for me to explain uh, the reality and, and what we see versus uh, what um, ABI um, tells us. We see also discrepancies between ABI and Dodge uh, index, which is another indicator you can look at. 
Thank you. Uh, then the second one, uh, perhaps for Eric, um, uh, the savings. I think you talked about MFP 210 million. If you just confirm that number is correct, uh, if, uh, if, I listen, if I heard it well. And also on the short-term actions, um, you know, is, is this just the carryover from last year? What, what have you achieved in Q1? And maybe for both, how we should we think about the incremental savings uh, for the rest of the year? No, uh, Rescue, your... You are absolutely right. I talked about MFP savings of uh, 210 million sec for Q1. There, with the what we believe then for the full year for MFP is about 600 million sec. If you talk about the sh- short-term cost savings, those ones we initiated uh, most of that during, I would say, uh, end of Q2. So, if you look on Q1, I would say that the savings from that is slightly higher than the 210 million that I talked about on, on MFP. But it's also so that, I mean, we are continuously taking actions. I mean, we, Nico talked before that we have, let's say, an agile and decentralized organization. So if we need to do more, we will do more. Thank you. The next question from Andrew Wilson, JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning. Um, it's probably two relatively quick follow-ups, if that's okay. Um, just on the pricing commentary, do you uh, memory Challenges. And then the market, and so so far, the market has been. Uh, uh, very mature, and we have seen, uh, you know, competition in general um, following uh, when we. Uh, with price increases, with the exception, like I mentioned, on everything that is steel-related, where we are, we are happy that we can keep uh, the prices on the levels where they are uh, uh, today, giving also the uh, steel indexes uh, how they have uh, evolved over recent uh, months. Uh, I guess competition sees the same inflationary pressures as us, because it's not only uh, raw material, it's also, like I mentioned earlier, uh, labor inflation, energy inflation, logistic inflation, uh, general inflation. When it comes to China, we had a mid-single-digit negative uh, growth in the quarter. Of course, Q1 is always a, you know, a difficult quarter to, to come to conclusions because of um, Chinese uh, New Year. But, but clearly, you know, China uh, construction market is not out of the woods uh, uh, yet. Like I, I said earlier, we believe that um, China construction market is bottoming um, out, and from here on we should see a gradual uh, uh, slow um, uh, improvement. We still believe that is uh, uh, the case. Um, But you should, of course, make a difference between the market and and, and our um, uh, business. We are still very exposed to new build uh, in in, in China, and we have decided uh, that we don't want to quote even on certain uh, new build because we want to be to have a reasonable chance of being uh, uh, paid when we get orders for a uh, uh, new build. So most probably, uh, on, on, if you're on the new build side, we might even uh, drop more than the, than the market. That's a conscious uh, decision. But then when it comes to replacement uh, market on the residential side, when it comes to uh, commercial, uh, the, uh, the verticals where we decide to focus on, we are definitely doing better um, um, uh, than the market. And if, if we just see a, a gradual improvement of the market coming coming back, that should be soon also translated uh, into uh, back positive uh, uh, organic growth numbers and also positive uh, bottom line numbers. Thank you very much. For any further questions, please press star and one on your telephone. We have a follow-up question from Ritz Maidi. Jeffries, please go ahead. 
Yeah, thanks for the follow-up. Just quickly on HHI margin, how much of the improvement is due to uh, the synergies being sort of achieved? Are we too early to quantify those so far versus just, uh, you know, improvement in the business as top line getting better and uh, you guys getting a grip on, on, on the business overall? Yeah, obviously top line is not getting better because we said that we had a, a, a 5% uh, or a, a negative uh, uh, organic growth. Um, Depends also a bit what, what you call uh, own initiative and, and, and uh, synergy uh, uh, effect. Take the example of pricing. Of course, they, they did already some pricing actions before we became uh, the, the proud owner of HHI. Then, of course, we, we um, uh, invested in their pricing uh, team. We brought our pricing experience in. So together, I think we, we did a better uh, job on, on pricing. Is it then synergy or is it uh, uh, their own previous actions? Uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Uh, you know, both pricing actions give us uh, uh, good, positive uh, uh, results. But definitely we, st we start to see the, the first synergies kicking um, in. We are buying uh, materials and components uh, together, consolidating um, volumes, giving us um, uh, purchasing uh, uh, leverage. We are filling uh, the factories of HHI with things that we used to buy from external suppliers and we produce now in the HHI um, factories. We are uh, cross-selling um, uh, uh, products um, in, in the U.S. and in um, export uh, markets. So, yeah, the synergies uh, start uh, definitely to uh, kick in. That's also why we are confident that we will continue to improve margins uh, now going forward. Perfect. Thank you. Gentlemen, there are no more questions at this time. <clears throat> Thank you. That means that we, uh, it's time to round up uh, this conference. And uh, if there are any follow-up questions, feel welcome to, as usual, reach out to us at Investor Relations. Uh, that means that it only remains for us to thank you for your interest and participation. And we look forward to speaking and seeing you in the coming weeks and also at our CMD in the middle of May. So have a good day now. Thank you. Thank you.